patient population in our first in human phase one study of Regeneron 1979 is a population of heavily pretreated patients with CD20 expressing B cell lymphomas. About two thirds of the patients on this study had diffuse large B cell lymphoma, about one third had follicular lymphoma, and a smattering had um, other diagnoses such as mantle cell lymphoma and marginal zone lymphoma. The drug was administered um, initially in a step-up dosing schedule where we started with a very low uh, first dose for a patient and over the course of the next uh, three weeks we went up incrementally and so by the fourth week we were at the full dose that was assigned to the patient. And this step-up dosing strategy helped us um, get through our dose levels that were planned in the study without encountering any dose limiting toxicities in the dose escalation portion of the study. Uh, and so it helped attenuate toxicities such as cytokine release syndrome that we might expect with a uh, bispecific antibody. So the safety profile of RGN 1979 is marked primarily by toxicities related to cytokine release syndrome, and most of these are grade one and two toxicities, uh, although we've had a few grade three toxicities as well. Um, most of the cytokine release syndrome uh, is seen very early in patient treatment when we're doing their step-up dosing, and uh, by the time we get to their uh, third, fourth, and fifth weeks of treatment when they, in the fourth week when they get to full dose, um, typically we're seeing only grade one, maybe a few grade two toxicities and nothing more serious than that. Uh, these types of uh, bispecific antibodies and related drugs have also been associated with neurotoxicity. Uh, we do see neurotoxicity primarily grade one and two, primarily headaches and insomnia. Uh, we've had five grade three toxicities we have not had any grade four neurotoxicity and we have not seen any seizures, for example. Um, because of the uh, favorable toxicity profile, uh, we were able to, uh, again, go to our highest planned dose without seeing any dose limiting toxicities. Uh, in terms of uh, higher grade toxicities, grade three and four, in addition to the types of toxicities I've already mentioned, we had a low incidence of cytopenias with um, patients who were neutropenic or anemic or had thrombocytopenia. Uh, when we completed the uh, dose escalation, the study went into some expansion cohorts looking at patients with aggressive lymphomas and with indolent lymphomas. In the expansion cohort phase, we had one patient uh, who had a tumor lysis syndrome related death, and because of that, the study is being amended to add some safety features uh, in terms of following uh, in a more regimented and close way for uh, tumor lysis syndrome. In terms of patients who've completed study, uh, we have at present about 30% of the patient population still on study. We have 10% who completed all of their uh, planned study treatment and are in follow-up. And of the remaining 60%, um, about half came off study, uh, a little bit more due to disease progression, which would be expected in this patient population. Uh, I'll first speak to follicular lymphoma patients, and in the follicular lymphoma population, um, once we were above our lowest doses, so we've looked at this data um, from a five milligram dose upwards, uh, we see a 95% overall response rate and a 77% uh, complete remission rate. Um, so very active 
uh, agent in these refractory follicular lymphoma patients. When we look at the diffuse large B cell lymphoma patients, we clearly saw a uh, dose uh, response feature. So as we went up to higher doses, we saw more responses. So when we look at those patients at doses of 80 milligrams of Regeneron 1979 or above, we saw that we had uh, patients who had had prior CAR-T therapy uh, and patients who had not. And so I'll just present this data splitting out those two groups. So in the patients who did not have prior CAR-T therapy, we had a 71% overall response rate in large cell lymphoma and every one of those patients were complete remissions. In patients who had uh, received prior CAR-T therapy, we had a 50% overall response rate of which uh, half or 25% were complete remissions. Uh, as I said before, this study was not limited to large cell lymphoma and follicular lymphoma, so we made some observations in some other B-cell lymphomas. Uh, we had patients with mantle cell lymphoma, and we also had separately patients with marginal zone lymphoma, and in each of those lymphomas, we saw a overall response rate that was about two-thirds, 67 percent, about half of whom were complete remissions, so CR rates of 33 percent. So future directions for evaluating Regeneron 1979 in the relapsed refractory B-cell lymphoma population include an uh, ongoing phase two study, which is looking at patients with relapsed refractory follicular lymphoma who've had two prior therapies, um, so in the third line setting. And that study in the future may also look at other B-cell lymphoma uh, diagnoses. Um, the sponsor also has a study open with a combination of Regeneron 1979 and a checkpoint inhibitor. Uh, in the future, uh, this drug may show um, promise as monotherapy in these very refractory patients, but it may be brought into earlier lines of therapy in combination, and uh, I um, suspect that the sponsor will uh, be planning a number of combination studies in the future.